get started. My name is uh, Dwayne Gerhardt. I'm a software engineer that has worked with various uh, commercial route data sets for over 15 years. I know, don't judge me. Uh, however, I've been using the OpenStreetMap data for the past five years. I am dedicated to improving uh, maps for the open community, and this passion has led me to the MapZen team. Today, I will be discussing quality route guidance. MapZen started a few years ago with a handful of visionaries here in New York City as a mobile-focused mapping company. The MapZen team collaborates to prove the same hypothesis, that open maps are the future of maps. Um, MapZen is founded on two core principles, build and support open source software and open data. MapZen encourages the community to start where you are. When you start where you are, uh, applying this philosophy to OpenStreetMap, if you start where you are, you accept the shortcomings of data inconsistencies, both past and present, but you keep optimistic where the future will be leading you. Now I'd like to talk about our Valhalla project. Why the name Valhalla? Taken from Norse mythology, this is a great hall for valiant warriors. Um, so our warriors, I mean developers, have set out to strategically mount an attack on route guidance. Here are the Twitter handles for our warriors. Uh, most of the team is here today. Please stop by our table. We would love to discuss Valhalla with you. Uh, please check out our demo page and follow our progress on GitHub, GitHub under the Valhalla organization. In the last six months, our team has developed an open source routing and directions engine using OpenStreetMap data. Valhalla's name was inspired by key features of the routing engine. The key features of this project, once again, have names asso associated with Norse mythology. Uh, Loki, a play on words for the module that finds a location on a graph tile. Thor, which stands for Tiled Hier Hierarchical Open Routing, Using tiles for routing enables us to have a smaller memory footprint and thus the possibility for offline routing. Dynamic costing can help with alternate routes. Uh, currently, we have partnered with Transitland to receive schedule information to support multimodal transit routes. ODIN, which stands for Open Directions and Improved Narrative, uh, we'll get to this in a bit. Uh, TIER stands for Take Your Route, uh, it's our service component. Uh, now I'd like to take a high-level look at how information flows th through our service. Uh, request comes into our prime server, and the HTTP request is validated and sent on to Loki. Uh, Loki takes the receive lat longs and, and associates that to a graph edge. That information is passed on to Thor, where the trip path is uh, actually calculated. Uh, Thor sends that to Odin, and Odin transforms the trip path into trip directions, and we'll get more into that in a little bit. Trip directions are forwarded onto tier. The response is formatted and then sent back to the user. Uh, yes, this is Odin, the one-eyed god. In our world, Odin is laser-focused at improving uh, route guidance. Uh, the outline for the Odin discussion, we're gonna talk about some goals for Odin. Uh, define some terms, uh, talk about the process of going from trip path to trip directions, uh, step through some examples, touch on some testing methods, and then uh, discuss the future of Odin. Uh, at the bottom there is our GitHub link so you can check out Odin. Uh, first, the goals. Uh, first and foremost, generate quality route guidance. Want to transform path information uh, into narrative directions. And this is more than just simple turns with road names. Uh, the improved narrative shall be succinct, useful, and easy to follow. We want to uh, collapse maneuvers and simplify transitions at complex intersections. <clears throat> Exit and directional information on highways removes ambiguity at these key decision points. Tailored, uh, Odin shall be tailored to different la locations and languages, so extensibility and community contribution are key. And Odin must work well in the real world. And all this uh, lends itself to a calm, confident user. I'd like to uh, 
define some route lingo so you're familiar with it uh, when I reference it in the examples. Uh, the first one, uh, doubly digitized roads. It's a two-way road uh, uh, represented as two separate edges. And in this example, Jonestown Road is a doubly digitized road. Internal intersection edge occurs at the intersection of one or more doubly digitized roads. Uh, you can see there's the highlighted four uh, in internal intersection edges. Uh, typically, these edges are marked in commercial data. Valhalla derives these uh, based on the intersection attributes. Turn channels at grade turn lanes, again, typically marked in commercial data sets. Valhalla derives these based on the link tag and the intersection attributes. Uh, common base street name. This is a, a technique that we use when we're trying to make a determination to combine two edges or combine two maneuvers. Uh, so uh, we're, com we're comparing two lists of street names and we're looking um, for a common name, but more important, a, a common base name. Uh, for the US, we want to ignore the prefix and suffix directional. So for example, here in New York City, if you're on West 26th Street and you cross Fifth Avenue, it becomes East 26th Street and we're trying to make a determination if we need to call out an instruction for the user. So by concentrating on the, the common base name of 26th Street, we combine those and we don't call anything out. Another example, East Chocolate Avenue, US 422. Uh, we compare that against US 422 East and West Main Street, and we find the common base name of US 422 and we combine. And I'll have an example that will illustrate this a little further. Uh, so the, the actual uh, process overview of Odin, uh, Odin receives the trip path from Thor, which is a list of nodes and edges and shape. Um, so we call our maneuver builder, and it will start walking the edges to make decisions to create the maneuvers. Um, it will be looking at the, the common base street names between the edges. It will be looking at the geometry for the edges on the trip path, and also the edges that intersect the trip path to determine if we need to call something out or how we should call something out. Uh, we'll be also inspecting other attributes such as um, internal intersections, turn channels, if it's a ferry, if it's a roundabout. Uh, all that will come into play to create our maneuvers. Once we have our initial maneuver list created, then we'll look to combine the maneuvers to further simplify. An example of this would be if there's a turn channel maneuver, uh, we want to collapse that with a subsequent maneuver to have an easy call out of turn right onto Main Street. After we have our final uh, list of maneuvers, then we call uh, a narrative builder where we'll actually assign instructions for each maneuver, and then the trip directions will be uh, passed on to tier. In our first uh, example here, simplified left turn. Uh, the, looking at the map on the left, uh, you can see that the highlighted edge is named Snowden River Parkway in the data. So if we were going from the start pin to the end pin, it would appear that we need to call out to go northeast on Broken Land Parkway, turn left onto Snowden River Parkway, continue onto Patuxen Woods Drive before getting to your uh, destination. Uh, however, uh, checking out the picture on the right, uh, you'll see that Snowden River Parkway is to the right and Patuxent is to the left, so it'd be very confusing to the user if we'd call out left on the Snowden River Parkway. Uh, so we have Snowden River Parkway as an internal intersection edge in our combined logic. We combine that edge with the subsequent maneuver to get the simplified narrative line two turn left onto Patuxent Woods Drive. A similar example here for a doubly digitized U-turn. Again, going, uh, looking at the map on the left, going from the start pin to the end pin, looks like we'd go northeast on Jonestown Road, make a left onto Devonshire Road, and then a left to go back onto Dev uh, Jonestown Road. Uh, noticing the picture on the right at that intersection, uh, really that's not what the user would expect. Uh, you see that the, the opposing lanes of Jonestown aren't really that separated as it appears in the map, but you're really just making a, uh, a U-turn. So again, the Devonshire link is an uh, internal intersection link, and we combine that and get the simplified make a left U-turn at Devonshire Road onto Jonestown Road. 
common base street name example. This is a route going from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania up to State College, Pennsylvania. And even though the, the route twists and turns following the, the rivers and the mountains, it is, uh, in the real world, one road, US 322 West. Uh, so uh, what I did was uh, turned off the common base street name logic and just used a simple equals uh, to, to compare the two street name lists. And this is the, the result in the basic narrative on the top right. There are 12 maneuvers of road name changes over that 77 mile stretch of road. So I know if I had my nav app and it was calling out uh, street name changes at 0.8 and 0.2 and 0.7 miles, I'd be ready to throw it out the window. So clearly not what we want to do. Uh, we turn the common base street name logic on and we collapse those 12 maneuvers down to one maneuver. This is a directional and exit info example. Uh, for this particular one, you're, the user is on Interstate 83 North. And this, in this example, the interstate actually comes to an end. And then there's a fork in the road. So uh, looking at the, the picture on the right, you can see that the user either has to go to the left to go onto Interstate 81 South or right to go onto Interstate 81 North. At, at this point, when the Interstate 83 ends, if we would give the instruction of continue on to Interstate 81 with no highway directional, the user would freak out because they would have no idea which way to go here. So looking at uh, narrative line two, we call out the proper exit number, 51B, uh, the, the proper relative direction on the right, the branch road that they're going on to, Interstate 81 North, and the additional toward information, I-78, Hazleton, Allentown. Also note that uh, narrative line three, we merge onto Interstate 81 North. We pull out the highway directional from the relation and to use that with the ref to, to make sure that that key piece of information is, is supplied to the user. So for this case, this is definitely where we want to keep the, the user calm and confident. Uh, sometimes when uh, an AB exit departs the highway, uh, it departs at the same location, and then further down the ramp, it will, it will fork and split, and A will go one direction and B will go another. Um, <clears throat> so there's usually uh, exit sign information where it departs the highway and more exit sign information where the, the fork is in the ramp. So you can see the, in the, from the photograph, this is the exit sign information when, when both A and B depart the highway. And if we would provide that for the user, that's what the basic narrative is showing, that that would clearly be information overload. So as Odin is walking the edges, it's using the consecutive exit information to rank, sort, and collapse the information. So you can see in the approved narrative, it, it uh, removes all the clutter and keeps the user focused on the path they need to traverse. This example, uh, for narrative examples using different tagging methods, uh, there are multiple methods to supply exit information in OpenStreetMap. So there's the, uh, on the left box, there's the, the node and way, uh, combination way, and for that one, we will pull from the ref tag of the node and the destination and the destination of the way to get the, the narrative on the bottom, the exit narrative on the bottom. And you can see on the box on the right is the node only technique and we pull from the exit two tag and the ref tag to form the exit narrative at the bottom. So it just, whether it's the node way or the no, we, we pull the information out and can form the exit narratives. Uh, there's a, a wiki link at the bottom if you wanna see some more uh, exit sign info tagging examples. Uh, so uh, testing methods could be a whole 20 minute discussion on its own. So I'm just gonna skim the surface here. Uh, the, the, we use unit testing, great for spe specific parts of the code. Um, yeah, then you can sit around all day and think of the different test cases for driving directions, and, and then the real world happens. You, you run a few routes, and you find issues that you, you never thought of. So uh, we use this RAD testing, which stands for Real World Analyzed Delta. So we create test files uh, that based on real world test cases uh, that you're familiar with, it's definitely a start where you are moment. Uh, then we 
run the, run the test file and analyze the output uh, and form a baseline. And then anytime the software or the, the data changes, we rerun it and compare the results to the baseline results. And if everything's fine, then you know, it's our new baseline. If there's issues, um, typically the problems are not unique to the test cases. Usually it's an underlying pattern. And that's what we try to focus on is that uh, when we're fixing the problems that we find, that we're, we make sure our, the scope is right, that it's just not this particular test case, but it's for the, the general pattern. Um, and then if possible, if we break that down, then we'll you know, insert those into our unit test cases. Um, this is usually um, uh, advocate for automated tests uh, for, for everything, except this is probably one time when we don't advocate for that. Um, for two reasons, it's very difficult to, to implement effectively for this RAD testing. And, and also, there's a, there's a positive side effect that the developer actually understands the problem space better and thus provides a better solution. So uh, looking for the future of Odin, um, <clears throat> we want to improve the mobile experience uh, to return verbal strings. This would help out when there's uh, state abbreviations being sent back, and it could be like merge onto PA 283, and a, a mobile app could call it out, you know, merge onto PA 283. So we want to send back the instructions to help, you know, so they'll say Pennsylvania. We want to do location based optimizations uh, for road networks and names in different countries, and we want to handle street name inconsistencies. Uh, this could be a case where you're on road name A. And then it, it says continue under row name B for a little bit, and then continue under row name A again. This is a, uh, a signature that we can find and, and collapse for the near term to improve the experience for the user. But uh, hopefully for the long term, we could possibly forward the issues onto Matt Roulette. We want to support several languages. A well-defined dictionary will encourage community contributions. Um, we want to do landmark routing. Uh, for the US, this could be, you know, turn right onto Main Street, Starbucks is on the right. Uh, for other locations around the world, they use uh, landmark and, or reference points uh, for their actual orientation, so the, the landmark could be key in those locations. Again, uh, thank you, everyone, for coming to the talk. Uh, start where you are, continue to improve with Valhalla, Loki, Thor, Odin and Tier, we're working to improve open routing. If you have uh, questions about our tile-based routing, the, the route team is going to be out at the table for the next two hours. Uh, right now, does anyone have any questions on quality route guidance? Really interesting stuff um, that you're doing there, uh, and yeah, you know, very much needed if you're going to get any sense out of OpenStreetMap routing directions. I'm intrigued to know to what extent is um, uh, are the routes directions pre-processed, and to what extent is it all post-processing once you've got um, you know once you've got the actual directions out of the database? Um, is it live post-processed based on the route that's been planned, or have you done loads of pre-processing before you import everything? Uh, I mean, we do, a, we do our data conversion, and when the data conversion happens, we're doing something like the, the intersection, uh, internal intersection edges, we're tagging that. But then, you know, the trip path is calculated, and it's just the attributes coming through into Odin, and then we transform that trip path into the trip directions. Okay. Um, I mean, one example that I was particularly interested in when, was when you were talking about the um, common base street names, and you showed something that said, you know, continue on US322. Um, Given that the first part of your route was, I think, US 22 as well, um, if halfway through the route you had swerved off onto the other bit of US 22, which isn't 322, would it have been fine and said, you know, carry on on US 22 right from the start? Uh, yeah, yes, that would. Yeah, so that's during that process of actual the, the making that trip direction. So that's not pre-processed. Right, excellent. Right. Okay. Yeah, yep. cool. Thanks. Yes. Faced any issues uh, using the OSM data, like uh, turn, turn restriction wise, or intersections not joining at the nodes, the waypoints being not. Uh, well, you say when you're routing, you might have found some issues 
with the data itself. So are you, you have anything in your testing to recognize them? Yeah, there, that's, um, uh, we're under a pretty aggressive schedule to get where we were right now, but absolutely, there, we're always gonna find issues with the data, and then it's gonna be building more and more test cases in the coverage, and then we'll be able to, you know, hopefully track that and, and get more statistics on that. But yeah, we're, we're always gonna be finding issues like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are there any Android apps we could use to try this out? Um, not yet. <laughs> right, open by Mapson? Co correct, that's using OSRM for the routing directions. Yeah, but the closest thing, not right. probably. No. Any more questions? All right. Well, we are going to be out at the, the uh, table for the next two hours. If you have any questions, please stop by. Thank you.